Good morning students. Let's see how we can solve the spectroscopy problems. We need to solve it very quickly because in set net we don't have time for thinking because the problems we got are first order spectors. Okay, they are first order spectors. They are not too complicated. So our first problem is C8 H11 N. Here are IR data. Here is a PIMR data. So first thing we need to do for solving any spectroscopic problem is to calculate the sides of unsaturation. Okay, we need to calculate the sides of unsaturation. So I have trick to calculate the sides of unsaturation. You know that in the periodic table the elements are placed like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. So we, if you have oxygen, just ignore the oxygen. Don't add or subtract anything. If we have nitrogen. Just remove one hydrogen from the molecular formula, and if we have halogens, add one hydrogen to the molecular formula. Let's see how we can do it. This is our formula C eight H eleven N. So we have nitrogen. What we are going to do? We are going to remove one hydrogen from the formula. Then formula will become C eight H ten as we replace the nitrogen with minus one hydrogen. So our formula will become C eight H ten. Now let's see how we can calculate the Sides of unsaturation. Here is the general formula for the carbon C8. C8 that is CnH2n plus 2. C8 16 plus 2 that is 18. So we have C8H18 for the saturated hydrocarbons containing 8 carbons. Let's subtract the 18 and 10. Okay, we need to subtract the 10 from this 18. So How many hydrogens? There are eight hydrogens. But as you know that two hydrogens account for one side of unsaturation. So eight divided by two is equal to four. So we have four sides of unsaturation for this formula. Okay. So first thing we completed. Now let's see the second thing. We have four sides of unsaturation here. Now let's go to the IR problem. Okay. So we have IR at around thirty-three hundred, sixteen hundred, one thousand, seven sixty, and seven zero three. In our formula, there is a nitrogen, and I are showing the peak around 3300 or 3400. That clearly indicates that there is a presence of amine. Okay, there is a presence of amine. Our NH2 group might be there. So, okay, let's see. From the I, we got the NH2. From PMR, let's see what we can conclude. In PMR, the first signal shows that 7.2 multiplet of 5H. 7.2 is a region of aromatic protons, and 5H showing multiplet. Definitely, it is nothing but it is a mono substituted benzene ring. It is a mono substituted benzene ring. Now the second signal is 3.87 quartet 1H. So this 1H is going at 3.87. That means it is directly attached to the hetero atom. First thing, and secondly, it is showing quartet. That means it is attached to the CH3 quartet. That means Four and that the one H is attached to the C H three like this. So C H is attached to C H three, showing quartet because of this three hydrogen, and X is any hetero atom. But in our case, there is a only nitrogen, so it is attached to the nitrogen over here and C H three. Okay. Now next signal is one point eight three B S two H. Of course, you know the B S is a broad singlet of two H. That means there is a presence of N H two. Okay, N H two will show the broad singlet. Next signal is 1.2 showing doublet of 3H. So 3H, which are attached to CH, that's why they are showing doublet. This 3H are attached to the single hydrogen. So CH, because of this CH, they are showing doublet n plus one rule. So now we have these four groups over here. So how we can assemble these four groups? I like this kind of Signals CH. Here we can attach two groups to this CH. So let's see how we can do it. We have this CH CH3, and we need to attach two groups. Here is a benzene ring. Here is the NH2. Let's attach benzene ring over here, and nextly NH2 over here. Okay. This is our final structure. That's it. So simple. Let's go for the next problem. This is our next problem. Having molecular formula C9H10O2. Okay, we have C nine H ten O two. So, calculate the sides of unsaturation. Now we have oxygen over here. Okay, so oxygen we need not to add anything or need not to subtract anything. So our formula will become C nine H ten from C nine H ten O two to C nine H ten. 
what will be the general uh, general formula for the saturated hydrocarbon it will be c9 18 plus 2 cn h2n plus 2 so it will be c9 h20 let's <coughs> see how many hydrogens we need 20 minus 10 is the 10 hydrogen so 10 hydrogen divided by 2 it, there are five sides of unsaturation for this formula okay we have five sides of unsaturation now let's take a look on the ftir so we have ftir signal at 1738 actually 1740 is a typical signal for the ester molecule okay we have ester functional group showing the ir stretching frequency at 1740 this also support the this is also supported by the molecular formula because we have two oxygen over here. So this two oxygen might be utilized for the formation of ester molecule. Okay, then 1600 and 1500 are the uh, benzene ring uh, stretching frequencies. Now let's look at the PMR. First signal is at 2.1, showing singlet at 12 mm. Okay, 12 mm. How to calculate the mm two protons? Let's see. If we consider this 8 as 2H, then that means 4mm will be 1 hydrogen. There, singlet 12mm, 12mm will be become 3 hydrogen and 20, of course, it will become 5 hydrogen. So, so, so totally 3 plus 2, 5 plus 5, 10 hydrogen. Okay, we have 10 hydrogen over here. So, first signal is at 2.1 showing singlet 3H. That means we have CH3 attached to something electron withdrawing group okay some electron withdrawing group like co cc or cm okay c double bond in okay so this ch3 is attached to the double bond therefore it is going at 2.1 showing singlet now next single single signal is 4.9 showing singlet of 2h that means these two hydrogens are attached directly to the heteroatom also there might be a sp2 carbon over here okay so that's why it's showing at 4.9 delta and the next signal is 7.2 h multiplet of 5 hydrogen nothing but mono substituted benzene ring so how we can assemble these things now let's see we have the ester functional group and already we see that this ch3 might attach to the carbonyl so let's fix this ch3 on the side of carbonyl and oxygen there is a ch2 okay we have CH2. Now we can see CH2 and oxygen over here. So one valence is incomplete. Attach your benzene ring to the CH2. This is our final molecule. That's it. So simple. Okay. Quickly we know you need to assemble all these things. Understood? Let's go for the next problem. Next problem is C7 S7 Br. Now look at look at this problem. I have bromo containing compound. Previously it was oxygen containing. The first problem was nitrogen containing. So to calculate the sides of unsaturation, what we need to do? We have now halogens, that is a bromo. That means we need to add one hydrogen to our formula. This is a C7H7Br. If we want to replace Br, we need to add one hydrogen to the formula. The formula will become C8, C7H8. And what will be the formula for saturated hydrocarbon containing seven hydrogen? C7H14 plus 2, that is C7H16. Now, there will be 8 hydrogen remaining from the sites of unsaturation. So, 8 hydrogen that means there are 4 sites of unsaturation for the this formula. Now, look at the IR and NMR. IR showing 1600, 14 or 1500, 880 and 780. Actually, 1600 is a characteristic peak for the carbon-carbon double bond. So, there are nothing much from, nothing much we can get it from the IR. But we can see that this 880 and 780 are the characteristic peak for the PRR disubstituted benzene ring, which we can confirm it from the NMR signal. You can see 2H, 2H protons. That means there is a benzene ring and it is a PRR disubstituted, symmetrically substituted benzene ring. Okay. Symmetrically substituted benzene ring like this. Okay. This is what we can get it from the IR. Now look at the PMR. In the PMR, the first signal shows that it is a 2.35 singlet of 3H. As you know that 2.3 that means this CH3 is attached to the sp2 carbon it might be carbon oxygen or it might be the carbon carbon but there is no oxygen in our formula that means it is attached to the carbon carbon double bond from benzene ring now next signals are 7.02 showing multiplet of 2h and 7.30 multiplet of 2h 7.2002 
this is the region for the aromatic protons that means these two hydrogens are from aromatic ring and this also from aromatic ring so we have this type of structure this two and this two okay so we have two substituent over here this one and this one we can see from the formula there is a br remaining and we have ch3 so we need to fix the ch3 and br now you see there is a plus i effect for the ch3 that means it will it, it will uphill the or shield the protons and we have minus i effect for the bromine of course there is a plus r also but due to minus i effect of bromine they, these signals shift a little bit downfield and we, because of plus i effect of the methyl group this signals little bit upfield okay now let's assemble the structure we put ch3 over here and br over here so we have the final structure like this okay so simple we can assemble it in within minute so i have task for you guys this is a problem for homework this is a first problem and the this is a second problem so you need to solve this problem and you need to comment your answer in my youtube channel okay i will reply in the comments this is a third problem from the said june 2019 you have to choose the correct option